Hi everyone, it's been a long time we haven't met on YouTube. We were quite busy in the last couple of months. Uh, we traveled to Europe uh, for two months, but fortunately now it's, the, it's warm again in Yunnan, it's very dry and we're reaching the peak of the tea producing season. So we're now in Jingmai in uh, our factory and I'm just gonna uh, talk briefly about uh, what we're processing tonight. Uh, we started quite early, it's quite rare that uh, we process tea before the night, but I think today we're gonna have a lot of tea. So, mm, this is some uh, tea from uh, Nogu, so it's, uh, it's a garden we rarely uh, process leaves from. Uh, it's close to Nogu, Nogu 1, actually like Nogu 1 it means, um, means uh, little, uh, little Nogu, and Nogu is like the proper uh, tea garden proper area, so it's more in the, mm, it's relatively flat, you have mild slopes and it's a place I, I love to, to go walk around, uh, especially during the winter. You often have cows hanging out there and so these three batches are from Nogu, we, we got tea from two producers and this is the, the remaining leaves we need to process from that uh, garden, but we'll get more leaves coming um, the tea pickers should be coming soon now. And this is some uh, leaves from Aiban uh, that we were gonna have. Um, yeah, nice, um, uh, nice gushu from Aiban. And this is the um, natural tea garden leaves. So this is from two different tea gardens, uh, Idwe and Erdwe that uh, my brother-in-law and some pickers are picking. So let's not waste any time, we need to, we need to keep going now. Okay, so we currently have uh, visitors from France, from France. Uh, one of them is helping me shoot this video, so thank you very much. And um, we're going to get to process a batch of leaves. Um, there's only no two way, I think. I, I just want uh, nine kilo. This is about nine kilo here. And our wok is quite hot. We're having a medium-high fire, which will be fine because we can start we can start on a hot walk. So let's not waste any time and let's do it. And during these uh, in these last couple of months, actually, I feel I have a lot of energy, so we're going to do a lot of stuff, I think, this year. Uh, traveling around Europe, we traveled from Estonia to France. Uh, we attended the Prague Tea Festival in Czech Republic, which was a great opportunity to meet a lot of uh, tea geeks and uh, really wonderful people. And every time I travel to, to Europe and uh, getting to those tea circles, it's a reminder that uh, aesthetics are a big part of the, of the tea, of the way of tea, of the, the tea culture, you know. Uh, here in Yunnan, we tend to overly focus on the technique, which I think is good. Of course, the technique must prevail. This is the first step in the understanding of tea. But more and more, I'm studying the aesthetics and and this year I've been uh, more and more interested in the ceramics. So very often at night while I'm cooking the tea, I just watch a video of a Japanese or Chinese uh, ceramics master making an Yixing teapot or a, or a Tokoname uh, Kyushu pot. So um, uh, I find some similarities with the tea. It's probably maybe a bit more technical than the tea, I don't know. But uh, I want to do more things with the ceramics. And you know, I was uh, looking on my tea factory because we, we will get the, the house for ourselves this year because uh, my wife's uh, sister uh, is moving out of the house. They're going to build a new house. 
And I was thinking about like, uh, we, we could modernize the house, modernize the factory, uh, may, maybe just build uh, the, the house from the ground up. But you know, I was looking at this wall behind us uh, with the red bricks and uh, the wood and the old, uh, the old uh, agricultural machines. Like this is for uh, sorting rice. Um, and I thought, you know, I really love this factory because this is really where we started our uh, tea business. We've been processing tea in this factory for uh, 20, uh, for, for like 12 years now, okay? We started in 20, 13 years, we started in 2011 here. My wife built this factory in the family home. And I think it'd be better to actually preserve it, you know? And that's where, like, you get to learn more about um, the patina, you know, of things. Look at this wok, for example. We've, we've cooked, like, hundreds of uh, batches in this wok. And it's got that nice patina. Okay, I need to take out some fire because it's a bit hot now. Um, it's shiny because of the, the tea. I'm going to open that. And you see, our factory sometimes gets smoky and a bit of that smoke gets into the tea, gets into the tea. And all our batches are handmade and each of them are slightly different from one another. And we don't do it on purpose, but unpurposely, I think this gives, this adds something to the tea. You know that uh, that smoke that might uh, permeate through the tea leaves, it will probably, uh, you, you, won't, you won't be able to say this tea uh, is smoky, you know, but it's just like adding a bit of salt on dishes. Uh, you just add some extra complexity with that. And so that's also why I want to keep doing that, uh, you know, cooking, cooking the leaves with uh, wood instead of gas or uh, electricity, it might give a slightly dirtier tea, you know, in the way that they are, they are, mm, there's a bit of smoky taste. Uh, it's harder to, to manage the heat. There's more inertia in the wood burning and the wok heating up. But in the end, that's what gives you a good product. You know, sometimes you, you would think like they should have the best tea in the biggest factories because they can control all the parameters, but from my experience, the best teas I have typically are from um, tea factories like these. And I'm afraid that by modernizing our tea factories, we might decrease the quality of our tea. So that's why I would rather keep our production small and, uh, and not really change much. You know, we, we can keep researching, keep doing experiments. Um, but we shouldn't really improve drastically uh, the, um, the, the technology with which we make tea. And so now, this year, I'm doing some experiments, but the challenge is I am not to allowed to use too fancy, too fancy tools, you know, when uh, carrying out those experiments. So I need to use what's available in the factory to make a special tea. Because, of course, when you get access to technique, when you can... For example, if you make a black tea, of course it's easier if you, can, if you have an oxidation room in which you can control temperature and humidity. But then it becomes a more rational process, a more industrial one. And, of course, you will get a, a more stable quality, but uh, it will be at the expense of maybe the art or um, the artisanal way, you know. We're now making black tea. There's some drying in the drying house now. And, and we, we didn't really plan on uh, how long we, we would keep it for, oxida for oxidation, for example. You, you check according to the smell. So every half an hour or so, you just go check your pile, smell it. And at some point, you know, you know it's the right time to take it out and uh, dry it under the sun.
every batch will be slightly different. But overall, I feel they just give a better experience to the tea drinker than a more uh, standardized product. So I, I'm still cooking these leaves from uh, Nogu. Nogu or Nogong. Uh, this is uh, the, the meaning of this, this garden is uh, uh, there was a, a little lake there. Actually, when it rains, it, it, it's uh, easily flooded, at least the bottom part of it. And then you have the mild slopes uh, going on both sides. And you have teas, uh, tea trees with uh, uh, particularly small leaves. Uh, some say it's a small leaf varietal, actually. So we might have like three different varietals in Jing Mai. You know, big leaf varietal, medium small, and small. Of course, the limit between uh, different varietals is quite, uh, quite obscure. Huh? But yeah, I can feel that here today, the leaves we're having in the walk now are particularly small. So, I know some, oh, some tea pickers are here, they are back from Iban Garden and uh, I will need to weigh the leaves. So of course that's the, the downside of uh, making tea during the day. You'll be distracted with, uh, you'll have other things to manage, but it's okay. You know, they just come back from the tea gardens. They can wait for 10 minutes. Maybe we can have a cup of tea after. We're gonna weigh the leaves just need uh, these leaves in my walk, just need a bit more time. And I think we'll get more leaves from Nogu in a couple of uh, minutes when the tea pickers come back. So um, I would like again to thank you very much for your support, really. Uh, it's great, like we're still growing year on year and um, well, we're really happy that you're enjoying our tea. Every day we receive emails and good reviews. So we'll try to make you satisfied again uh, this year. And so far, this is a great um, harvest. We're having really good quality with a very low yield. It hasn't rained in maybe three weeks now. Huh? So we had a light rain maybe yeah, two, three weeks ago. And since then, it's been very dry. Tomorrow, people will start uh, cleaning their houses to start the Water Splash Festival, which is the, the new year in uh, the Buddhist countries in Southeast Asia. So Thailand, Laos, uh, Myanmar, and Xishuang Bana, Southern Yunnan. Uh, new year will be on the 16th, um, but we start, uh, we start cleaning the house first, and then there are a couple of days before the, the main festival. But it's okay, I, I, will, um, I will be behind the walk, I think, because it's the right time to get uh, more tea now. I'm always, well, I'm a bit worried that it might rain and then we, we might lose the opportunity to fulfill our, our, um, our harvest, really. So far, we've only made maybe 120 kilo of tea, which is uh, really not a lot. We typically expect to make three, four hundred kilos during this harvest. Uh, we probably won't reach that much this year, but if we can go up to 250, that'd be great. And we've been processing mostly leaves from the ancient tea gardens. But today we're, we're still having some, uh, some leaves from the, the younger tea gardens, two of our natural tea gardens. Okay, so now we're going to let a bit more steam coming in this batch, you know, making a ball like this. For this batch, I chose to use uh, thinner gloves than usual. It's quite hot, but I prefer because you get a more direct control. You, you, you get a more direct relationship with the tea leaves you're cooking. You can better feel uh, the moisture in them. So even though your hands are hotter, I typically prefer to use uh, thinner gloves. 
Some people even uh, cook the tea without gloves on, uh, which I don't really like because then it, it doesn't allow you to get to the bottom of the wok. So yeah, I guess some, you can spend time developing the right technique, but I, I just prefer those thin gloves. And these are brand new. And I think we're going to give just uh, one more minute of steaming, okay, because uh, it, got quite, it got a bit hot at the start. I think that the wok was a bit too hot at the start. So for the next one, I'll make sure to get the, the right temperature. Sometimes it heats up too much. I, might, I should have uh, cooled it down a bit with, uh, with water, just a bit of water in the wok and just cool it down in seconds. And so now we're towards the end of this uh, tea session. I'm just going to shape it a bit like this. You see, to, to have the, the leaves falling vertically, to separate them, avoid having knots in the tea. And then, so you see they are quite more yellow if I take some uh, fresh leaves, uncooked leaves, they are much more green, you see. Uh, so that's what the, the process, the heat does to your leaf. It degrades the chlorophyll in the leaf and so it turns yellow. And so now it's time to end this batch and uh, maybe we can just uh, go check this uh, tea farmer, which is uh, Nadan's wife. It's a young man. So we're going to wait. So I don't need to, to keep it in the basket at this time because the spring leaves have plenty of moisture. We don't have the same problem as we typically have in uh, autumn with the water management in the leaf. So here uh, I don't give that extra steaming. If you give too much steaming, you might have a muddy soup and a slightly Japanese green tea taste, especially in young tea. So, but I will still uh, keep the moisture in. So I, wa I want it to cool down quite slowly. I won't shake it. Uh, I want the, the moisture to stay in the, in the batch for now. That will give, I think, uh, a smoother uh, rolling process. Mm. Yeah, I'm not a hundred percent sure about it, but that's how I like to do those things. And now we're going to go on the weighing scale, so... Uh, okay. And we can take a look at these uh, fresh leaves. Huh? This is a Oh. Up. Oh. Badin. Uh, Bagondin. Suliodin. Hmm? We can have a look maybe at the leaves. So you can check these leaves from Aiban. They smell pretty nice. M maybe we can go a bit outside to, to get more light here. Uh, and so you can compare. This is from the same garden. This is the leaves we got at noon. And this is the leaves we just got now. So the weathering, the, the withering and degree is different. Um, especially if you touch them without gloves. Uh, the withered leaves are much uh, softer. They also look greener. It's just because uh, they are not as turgescent. So um, we're just going to, to keep those leaves on the basket anyway. Uh, with the current weather, two hours of weathering should be enough. You know, so I'm just going to get some flat bamboo baskets for these leaves. And I think I'm going to leave you here because I think more, um, more tea farmers will be coming. 
uh, we'll keep you updated in the, in the next couple of days. There are a couple of experiments I'd like to uh, talk about. So maybe I will uh, meet you again behind the walk or in the tea factory for a future video. So thank you for watching and I hope you're enjoying your spring. See you later. Bye bye.